One, two, one, two. Yeah. Mic check. Uh -huh. Okay, good. So, Nick, um, it still feels like you are a little bit under the radar. You're a little bit of a sleeper. Do you do you agree with that? You know, what, what's your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I would definitely say I'm still under the radar. But, you know, I always I keep that chip on my shoulder, and that makes me go out there and play 10 times harder every time I step on the court. Clarkston, he is an eraser. This young man just gets it done and understands it defensively. He has turned into a major force. We have watched him mature so much these last few years. Physical development, emotional development, but also being a starter in this league, you need to bring it. And that has really stood out in how Claxton shows up every night with the same type of production and intensity. Some things we just have to know how to guard, whether that's pistol, whether that's point, whether that's away. All right. The expectations is we need to clean up. Joe needs to know exactly what Nick's going to do. Nick needs to know exactly what CJ is going to do. That's going to solve a bunch of our problems. And then when we don't solve it, the communication will help solve it. Today we did uh, like defensive cleanup. People are coming from like differences, of philosophies, and mixing systems and whatnot. So just. Clean up where like sometimes in the game we're we're on a little bit separate pages. You're not gonna be able to get under that. It's hard to read. You just keep the butt to the baseline, you're never getting screen. Like he's not even gonna beat you. So if he's over here in the slot and he's making move and he comes like this. Again, you gotta make a decision. What we, what we wanna do. You guys are good enough individual defenders to stay with the basketball as much as possible. <laughs> and then the low man is there to help on the cadence there where it's basketball, you screw up, the low man is there. We don't get a ton of opportunities to dial in and really talk things through and uh, kind of scrape things down and uh, why we're doing such coverage and uh, how's it really supposed to look. So great day for us to, to kind of do that and hopefully that pays dividends down the line. On his pin downs, the away action, Nick, you're the second screener. You're gonna take away his catch and shoots. I think we're just kind of creating an identity. It's tough having to create new defensive schemes. Dudes are used to playing um, certain ways, so you just gotta find your flow, and we, we're doing that. This dude might be coming to me, okay? And then though you'll be pushed out to there. If you were gonna say the identity of this group, how would you frame that? I'm um, probably hard-nosed. Um, Athletic uh, defensive team. I like there we go right there. Hard nosed athletic defensive team right there. <laughs> Great defensive play by Sumner. That was clean on the smack. Harris leaves it for Sumner. Banger goes. We have a group of guys who really enjoy playing defense, so there's nothing wrong with that. We'll kind of lean into that. Let that be our uh, our staple on a nightly basis. That gives you a chance to win. Always defense comes first before anything. Being able to switch, they were all active, long arms, they're all tall, so it's just it's tough for the offense that just about to drive just seeing that wall. Well, it took some time and commitment, but this team is starting to gel defensively. Over the last month, they've got the sixth best defense in the NBA. Here is Bay. That's a swarming defense. If you're the Brooklyn Nets, that's how you're going to get it done. If you mess up on defense, playing hard and communicate can fix it. And it's the NBA. You know, you're going to make mistakes. You know, it's, you're going to play against talented guys who are going to make tough shots. But if you're out there communicating, you put yourself in the best position to make the offense do what you want them to do. So D down there, great physicality, great square. All right, then when you create the collision, you can red right there. Team's defense gotten a lot better in the last month. What would you say have contributed to that? 
I think overall it starts with Nick Claxton, in all honesty. His ability to guard multiple positions. We've been in more switching defense lately. It's allowed him to guard and still rebound and have an impact, which is naturally his instinctive way of playing basketball. That's put more on the plate of Royce and Dorian Finney-Smith to be more captains of our defense and allow Spencer and Mikhail to just guard dudes on the perimeter, knowing that Nick's gonna come over and block shots. So at the end of the day, we've been switching a little bit more, which has helped us. We're trying to come together, challenging each other to, you know, not let teams get them 40-point quarters. We try to keep people uh, close to 25. You know, we, we keep teams close to 100. We give ourselves a great chance to win, and that's what we've been doing. You know, uh, been communicating a lot more, so we're just trying to gel. You know, we, we figure it out. We ain't been playing that, that many games together, but, you know, I um, feel like we've been playing together for a while now. It's getting better. Okay, you telling on yourself how good we can be. We still got some room to grow. One game at a time. Okay, but we got to have more consistent effort from beginning and end of game. Okay, from everyone. Consistency is going to be our calling call. If we're able to do it possession after possession, quarter after quarter, game after game. All right. Off we go. We'll do it again. Family on three. One, two, three. Family. Family. How you doing, Nick? I'm doing well. How you doing? Good, good. Good to talk to you, my man. What do you think your ceiling is as a basketball player? <laughs> my ceiling as a basketball player? I mean, honestly, a big goal of mine is to be defensive player of the year. Apparently, when you were here last, you had said multiple times that Clax was the second most talented player on the team. Yeah. When I was here, he was like rookie second year type. And, you know, people took it the wrong way at the time, but like it was a way of me just saying and, and publicly standing on like I see it in you. Granted, of course, time means nothing if you don't put in the work. Any guy that I'm working with, you know, first thing we do is kind of set up and take a look in the mirror and see what our strengths, our weaknesses are. So I looked at Nick, long, athletic, super talented. I called it a tool belt, so I thought Nick had a lot of tools on his belt. I'm old school, so when I was young, we had one or two tools on our belt. But we knew how to use them, you know, we were masters at them. It's just kind of a different game. So with Nick, let's take the ones that you mastered, let's maintain those. Athleticism, running, protecting the rim, guarding one through five. He had all those things, so let's not lose those, let's maintain those. But then, let's master some of these other things, you know, um, the physicality part, the finishing in traffic, just thinking the game, reading the game. But. Injury kept biting us the first couple years here. You know, we would build, 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 and then we'd get injured and unravel back to square one. And so that was kind of the pace at first. But I think he really dug into the performance piece. So really getting his body right, to get stronger, to build the little stabilizing muscles, do all the little things. He really bought into that process. So that allowed us to build on the court. So now you see synergy. Those things are starting to come together. and. You know, that's why he's developed. That's why he's improved. Catch, fire, rips out, slam down. Claxton, ferocious finish. Claxton snares and crushes. Nick Claxton has arrived. There's no mystery to success if you're a role player in the NBA. It's about your work habits. It's about your commitment. Are you about the team? Are you about the right things? Players, coaches, everyone with the Nets talks about he lived in the gym this summer and his professionalism went through the roof. I get incredible joy watching Nick Claxton now become this viable two-way force. What sparked things for this group? Were you guys able to outscore them 39 to 18? Uh, I think a big, a big part of it is, is Claxton. Uh, he covers up so much stuff in the paint. He was flying around, uh, contesting shots, blocking shots, rebounding the ball. That gets us out in transition. That gets us some easy threes, easy uh, layups. And uh, I thought that was big for us tonight. To me, he's just been more consistent with his habits. More consistent with his habits really off court, more consistent with his habits on court as well. You know, a prime example, I'm leaving Philly the other night and uh, I go to the restroom and we have some cold tubs that are in the, in the bathroom. 
and the two guys that are in there is Royce O'Neal and Nick Claxton. And I'm leaving, washing my hands, wiping my hands, and they're talking about being prepared to play tomorrow. That professionalism, that maturity, will go a long ways for Nick Claxton. It's paying off for him. The preparation, the dedication to your craft, to show up and be prepared to play every single night, there's something to it. And he's getting rewarded for it. It's tough getting a new team, you know, going into the playoffs and having such a quick turnaround. Change isn't always easy, isn't always comfortable, but a lot of times that's where you grow the most. And now I've been faced with a new challenge with us switching up our defenses more, which is fine. It's another opportunity for me to grow on my game defensively and also offensively. So I'm just, you know, like I said before, I'm just embracing the challenges and taking it day by day and just trying to be a sponge and learn as fast as I can. We set goals before the season started. So, you know, first goal was NBA champion. Second goal was defensive player of the year. Third goal was most improved player, you know. And again, we're not here for accolades. To me, that's just a result of the process. So we committed to working every single day towards those goals, right? And the chips are going to fall where they fall. But I think he's done that. And I think that's why he should be in these conversations. Goodness. Nick Claxton is just an incredible defender. This young man just gets it done and understands it defensively. The Nets switch by far the most on ball screens in the league. That is enabled because Nick Claxton has the ability to stay in front of incredible ball handlers. It takes commitment, it takes focus, it takes instinct, it takes work. Nick has been willing to do all of those things and has those attributes. My big thing with him is problem solving. That's what's changed to me most these last couple summers is that he's trying to problem solve. To me, you know, you find growth in being uncomfortable. So I think he's really dug into that and really dug into his weaknesses and tried to figure out, how do I make this a strength? And as he's added that to his tool belt, now that starts coming together and, you know, these other dudes can't hang with And a block on the inside. Claxton gets Powell. That's what the middle Nick has changed his body and he's changed his conditioning level. It is still a monumental challenge with the difference in frame and the incredible skill of a Joel Embiid. But oh my gosh, how fun was it watching that matchup? Because there is absolutely zero fear and zero back down in Nick Claxton. Joel Embiid's a bad man. And he started to talk smack to, to Nick Claxton and Nick Claxton was standing there like, Keep it coming, big fella, because I'm not going anywhere. There's a willingness to compete in there. You don't teach it, it's either there or it isn't. Come on, get me started about Nick Claxton. I think he's done a tremendous job with his physicality this year. This is a combat sport, so it's going to get violent. If you're big, it's going to get violent. They're going to hit you. We're leaning into that drama, we call it that drama. So there's another word, drama, right? Like, we're seeking drama. You know, you can pull up our clips, we, should, we look at clips and it's like, seek drama. We're not shying away from it or trying to finish around. No, no, no. We're going straight through that drum. Claxton trying to find his way through. He does. Nick Claxton is putting on a show. Nick has been stepping up big time. I mean, he's playing confident, and you know we got the confidence in him. Him taking big strides, you know, throughout this stretch and getting better each game. I'm just playing free. It's a lot more opportunity out there for myself, and my teammates are finding me. And I'm just playing. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun and definitely feel like this guy's the limit though. He plays with swag. He plays with confidence. And he's still got multiple ceilings to crash through in my mind. It really comes down to who does the Claxton want to be? Because from a competitive spirit and physical attribute, potential, this guy has got a very high ceiling. What that ceiling is, I don't know, but I'm anxious to watch it. <laughs> yeah, but that's crazy though. That's crazy. <laughs> Look how big my head is. <laughs> you, I got the biggest. Uh, baby, get that baby out of the street, man. Get that baby out of the street, man.
Drop, 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 you can yeah. drop off him. Good. Reads it there. He gets a layup on this. This is the stuff we gotta clean up. Start building our habits now. With tonight being a game where you could clinch, what was just your message to your group going into this game? Uh, it's gonna be be present. Nothing else matters. Uh, a week from now, tomorrow, nothing else matters but these two and a half hours that we're gonna be able to play basketball versus the Magic. That's the most important thing. And to challenge our group uh, to play four quarters. Like we haven't put four aggressive, in sync quarters together yet. So great challenge for us to try to do it tonight. O'Neal leave it for Curry. Get it ahead. Johnson running. Slaps it down. So the Nets are getting inside the paint. And when they do that, draw the defense. Good things happen. Two seconds. O'Neal has to launch at the board. We were just active defensively. Uh, we made it tough for them. You know, you know, they only scored 84 points. We didn't, you know, knock down a whole bunch of shots, but our defense was our catalyst tonight. Extremely proud of this group. The way we were able to just stay together the entire year. Create our own narrative, create our own story. You know, you look at teams 7, 8, 9, 10, they have uh, an all-star or multiple all-stars on their team. And this sixth seed, the Brooklyn Nets, we did it in a very competitive and uh, collective way as a group, as a team, and uh, hopefully the borough of Brooklyn is, is proud to have this group represent them in the playoffs. The Nets are going to the playoffs for the fifth straight year. They have clinched the sixth seed in the Eastern Conference. Finally clicking and finally figuring out what we can do out there. It was dope, man. Just happy to be in this position and, you know, be happy about it, but, you know, get ready to play. Yeah. Yeah. Dubs. Playoffs next. We see you. Yes, sir. See you in Philly, man. First of all, you earned it, man. You earned it. Nobody gave it to you. You earned it. Uh, impressive for this group to continue to gel together, right? Have no excuses. Somehow figure it out. Find a way. That's who we become, that's who we are. We'll continue to be that way. No excuses, okay? What's next is next, no excuses. All right, hell of a challenge for all of us, what's next, okay? Hell of a challenge. We talk about creating our story, now our, our story continues, man. All right, here we go. Family on three, one, two, three, family. family.